Alright, hello and welcome to the Stanley Parable. Now, I saw this game on Steam uh, Greenlight a while ago, and this it was a uh, it was sort of like an HD remake type thing. So uh, I had just recently downloaded the actual original source version, um, and that's what this is. It's a source mod. It's on mod database. You can go download it. I'm playing on the latest version. Um, it's got some updated updated like textures and stuff like that. So yeah. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, it's apparently extremely short. I looked up how long it takes, and it's it looks like it's about 20 minutes, although if you want to get all the achievements or something like that, it takes about five hours. Uh, so it should should be a pretty short Let's Play. I don't want to start up too many new series things. Oh, are they using this This is music? the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley oh worked God. for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427, and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. <laughs> Orders came to him through a monitor next to his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Oh my god. Okay, as soon as I get And then one day, play. something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on a monitor for him to follow. <laughs> No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and walked out into the hallway. There we go. All right, so that music in the opening cutscene was oh, can't actually see yourself. Oh, it's just another, another thing. That was a uh, Thomas Newman, uh, an something from the American Beauty soundtrack. I love Thomas Newman; he's my favorite composer. Like Stanley ever. decided to go to the staff lounge to Oop. check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself, and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Um. Okay, this is interesting. What happens if I don't listen? I'm gonna not listen. This was not the correct way to the employee lounge, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door and walked back in the right direction. Can I even? Like, I don't think I can open doors, right? Yeah, I can't open the door, so. Ha! If only I could follow your instructions. Huh. Maybe it was at the first open door. That's probably where I'm trying to go. Or I'm supposed to go, at least. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he was <laughs> five years ago. Maybe this is why everyone had left. No one wanted to be around someone as bad at listening as him. And since he was walking into the middle of nowhere and thus ruining the entire story, Stanley decided that he would punish himself. So when he came to the elevator and the doors opened, he stepped inside and pushed the button to go up. Oh my god, this is great. So wait, like the choices you make affect like the dialogue and stuff? I assume? Of course we're going down, right? Oh, Stanley. <laughs> you know, you really aren't going anywhere, and I don't say that deceitfully. I truthfully mean that there isn't a story down here. The story was back up where I told you to go in the first place. Right now, you're just running around looking at empty halls. And frankly, that's perhaps even more infuriating for me. So why don't you throw me a bone, give me a chance, and just let me tell the story I want to tell, hmm? Oh, this is so great. Okay. 
So I th I'm thinking I'm going to go through this let's play, not listening to him at all. Sounds great. Now listen carefully. This <laughs> is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Oh, eventually he's probably going to start doing uh, reverse psychology, and so I'm going to end up having to uh, figure out if he's lying or not. Uh -huh. Perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. Huh. You're funny, dude. <laughs> it's probably... Oh, I still yeah. don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked <laughs> yeah. through the red door. I love this. This is so great. All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop. Oh. <laughs> you see? Oh, that's great. It's nothing. No one's even built this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. It's just a bunch of skybox and dev wall textures. That's it. Oh, my God. Is this what you were looking for? Was it worth ruining the story? I what? Oh. Well, my game decided it would be a great idea to just exit to the desktop, so that's what happened. Sorry about that. Hopefully it won't happen again. Time into that. And now you... Well, here you are now, just looking at nothing. <laughs> to think that that's all I needed to make in the first place, just a whole lot of nothing, and you would have been happy. Well, hey, you still need a little something to do. Am I right? Here, let me load up another map. See if there's something in here that'll keep you occupied. <sighs> ah, here's one. Let's boot this up. We'll see if you like it. Oh, man. Nice. <laughs> I'm loving this. This is so funny. <laughs> I'm curious to see what happens if you follow him all the time. I may have to do that. Oh! Oh, wait a minute. God damn it. Are we really in Half-Life 2 right now? Well, Stanny. Is this any better? I don't know why it would be. This map wasn't even made for you. <laughs> at least I created a world specifically with you in mind. Oh, I wanted man. to make you a leading man. This one, well, I'm afraid you're on your own there. Oh, God. <laughs> this is so funny. Oh, my gosh. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. <laughs> He probably only got his job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That, or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. Oh my god. This is the... <laughs> I love this so much. Uh, so am I just going to play through Half-Life 2 like this? Hold on. Oh, oh. I spent so long talking about you. Why don't we just take a break from that and talk about something else for a change? Let's see. Well, according to Wikipedia, more than 90% of the night sharks caught off northeastern Brazil contain mercury concentrations higher than that considered safe by the local government. Now, this is fascinating. Don't you want to know more about the night sharks? Oh, no, of course not. All you want to hear about is yourself, isn't it? Well, fine. You haven't listened to me once so far. I can't expect you to turn that around now, can I? All right, let's continue. Uh, this is about where a uh, map loads up, isn't it? Oh, no, it's through here. That's right. Wait. <sighs> is this the end of the line? What? I don't suppose this was a particularly fulfilling experience for you, considering... Wait. Oh! What? Hold on. What are you, what are you oh, doing? Oh, shit. <laughs> what? Oh, God. Oh, no. Where am I? Okay. I just reached the edge right there. Danny, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. <laughs> How will you write a story without me? Oh, I see. It's supposed to go towards the light. Oh, God. Oh, it's that static. Oh, whoa. Oh, I'm back here. Okay. Um. So now what? Now there's no narration in this this part. Still no one here. <sighs> well, let's go right. Just go back the way we came, I guess. I mean, unless... Hmm. This may be the sort of game mechanic where it's like taking you back to the beginning. So it's like, okay, now you can try out the other things too. 
Hmm, I'm gonna try that and see what happens if I go in here. Oh. Nothing, apparently. Hmm. Not sure what's going on. Why is there no narration or Oh god, what? It's sad, I know. What? But all stories must come to an end. Of course they say it's the journey that truly matters and not the destination, and I like that idea. To think we might value the paths we walk as much as the places they lead us. Now, I don't know what sort of story you've ciphered out of that world you've made for yourself, but I hope that being the leading man was everything it's cracked up to be. I know it can be a little hard getting around without someone looking over your shoulder, but this is simply the nature of freedom. Besides, I haven't really gone anywhere. Maybe you don't want a guide, but I think I'll always have a place here at the end of every story. I'll step in and wrap things up with a nice piece of dialogue and a reflection on life that makes sense of whatever path you've chosen to walk. And for now, I'm happy to be the destination instead of the journey. But only for now. What? Oh my gosh, I love this song too! What's the deal? Ah, whoever made this is like, has the best taste in music ever. So is that, is that really it? Hmm, that was like five minutes. <laughs> um, I'm going to try a new game and see what happens if I follow him. And if it just takes me to exactly what I just saw. Because there are, they're all, click the skip. Oh, click the skip. Whoops, I was pressing space. Lol. Right. And he decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. All right, when so Stanley let's came to a set time. of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yep, sure did. Okay. So we'll continue down this way. Is this going to be the end of the story here? Is he going to have a different monologue? As Stanley entered the lounge, he oh. was horrified to find not a single person here. He decided he would walk up to see his boss, hoping that he would find an answer there. It's Dr. Kleiner. Hey, Dr. Kleiner. Oh, man. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked Ooh. upstairs to his boss's office. Ah, dang it. So many choices. Okay, um, well, we're following him all the way this time. So, hmm. Entering his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. It was at this point that he began to feel dizzy and a little sick, and even thought he might pass out when suddenly he noticed a key type anything next yet. to the filing cabinet in the mm. corner of his boss's office. Okay. Stanley had never seen this panel before and had no idea what combination of numbers would produce any result. In hmm. fact, only Stanley's boss knew this, since the panel withheld access to the boss's greatest, darkest secret. And so he had assigned the keypad a combination that only he could possibly know. The number of his freshman dorm number in college. One, nine, five, seven. Oh, hey, cool. Thanks but for course, telling me. Stanley oh. couldn't possibly have known this. Five, seven... What happens if I enter a wrong number? What? Okay, so that was just wrong. So I guess the only choice is for me to do this correctly, so... Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, <laughs> Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. Amazing. Stanley ventured forth into the newly opened passageway. This As he is so drew great. deeper into the bowels of the building, Stanley had no idea where he was or what this place held. And like just Assassin's as he began Creed. to think he might not discover a thing, he emerged into a long room to find... Oh, boy. ...rows and rows of monitors. Screens with a number above it. Like Stanley you. noticed, however, that these were not random numbers, but the number of employees who worked in the building, his co-workers, even his That's own me. number. 427 had a place on the wall. But why a setup so elaborate, he asked. 
Was this simple surveillance, or something even more? And as if in answer to his question, the wall slid open before him, revealing the ultimate truth of the situation. Whoa! <laughs> I probably should have turned around for that. Um, An enormous control ooh. panel Stanley discovered, but not one that controlled simple machinery. Oh my god. Buttons were labelled with emotions. Happy. Sad. Levers and knobs controlled actions. Walking, eating, doing work, or watching TV. Every input on this device monitored not the functions of a machine, oh, but of a human being. This is inside someone's head. The reality began to sink in. Stanley, like so many other people, reduced to images on a monitor, had been under someone's control, always at the mercy of this machine. Could this have been the only reason employee number 427 was content with his boring job? That a machine had altered his emotions to accept it blindly? He began to feel an unbridled rage, and at the peak of his anger, something oh. happened. A spark. Oh, geez. Stanley looked up and saw the generator overhead, still providing some small amount of power to the machine, keeping it alive. And knowing that this generator was all yeah. that kept the controls running, Stanley moved to the ladder in the back of the room and began to climb towards the rafters. Okay then. Hmm, this is an interesting story. I like the the thought that uh, they're controlling a human being. It's really cool. The higher Stanley climbed, the closer he felt to freedom. The further from enslavement. Yay. Oh man. That's closed. Probably open up later. What's this? Hmm. Ooh, and we're faced with yet another choice. You know what? There's a save feature. Okay, I'm actually gonna start doing this. Um should have done that before actually. What? Why is the save game not displayed? Save. Is it not working? Oh, there we go. There it is. Okay, good. Um, let's go ahead and engage. I'm gonna come back to this later and uh, see what happens. Oh, Stanley. What? You didn't just activate the controls, did you? Oh, shit, what? After it kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Oh, shit. I didn't know that's control. what I would do. Stanley. <laughs> Stanley. <laughs> I oh, applaud your effort. I really do. But you need to understand there's only so much that machine can do. You were meant to let it go. Turn the controls off and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you have. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized that he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. Oh, shit. In the event that this machine is activated oh, without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation, then? Oh, let's make it say, um... Two minutes. Now, this is making things oh a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? Go ahead. Play with those controls all you like. The real controls are where I'm sitting. Did you really ever believe you held any power? Um, Did you not think um, I knew what I was doing? When I erased your co-workers and turned off the machine, I was offering you freedom uh, and escape. I didn't uh, have to do that. Choices. I've done this story many times, and I don't always set you free. Sometimes you just sit there, day after day after day, oh, doing oh. your job forever, and then dying alone. But when I actually give you the freedom to control oh, your I can't. own actions, oh, I can't turn it it's off. not enough. I let you go, and you trapped yourself just the same. You just weren't made to handle this sort of responsibility, I'm Maybe afraid. I can push the controls out there. But you know there. what you were made for? Pushing buttons. <laughs> you get it now? Now I'm enjoying this. Tell you what, I'll throw some extra time oh on God. the clock just because I'm having <laughs> so much fun. There we go.
Tiger. Oh God. You see, That's fine. I want to watch you for every long second you try to puzzle this out. After all, it should make sense, right? The timer, the nuclear detonation, the mysterious facility, it's all here. This is a video game. Oh my God. Except for one thing there, hero. You've got no weapon, no vehicle. You don't even know where you're going. Nothing. When you saw that timer, you just instinctively started trying to find an exit, didn't you? In fact, I bet you're still looking for a way out. I bet you're clicking on everything in this room, trying to open doors or vents or something and oh. solve oh. the puzzle. As though this game has a solution, as though it can be won. That timer is not a catalyst to keep things moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. Uh. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. It's the moment when the hero realizes that despite his best efforts, he is powerless to his environment. And then he lets go. He surrenders. And he dies. Okay. 30 seconds, Stan. 30 seconds. Until a boom. And then nothing. Oh, God. No ending to this story, just you dying. I suppose you could have gotten an actual ending if you played along, but that just wouldn't have been your style, would it? I didn't know. Instead, oh. you all perish knowing that the only choice you made here was to turn on that machine and to start this timer. But you won't be alone, because I'm not going anywhere. I'll be here to watch every second of your inevitable life from the time we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever after. Oh, God! What? And that's it. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Okay. Um, let's try it. Let's see what happens if we disable it. There we go. That it? So that that's the end of the game too. Blackness. Oh. Power gone. All alone. And then. <gasps> oh man. As he stepped through the door into the fresh outside air, a feeling of liberation rushed through Stanley's body. He had seen power. He had seen enslavement and he had destroyed it. The underling was in control now. He had found his leading role. Stanley never discovered why everyone had gone missing nor how and when he had come under the machine's control. But it didn't upset him terribly, because he knew that this was how things were meant to happen. All he felt oh, was a delight unlike any he had ever known before. Never again would he follow someone else's orders without question. Never again would anyone tell Stanley where to go, what to do, or how to feel. No more bosses, no more instructions on a screen. Stanley decides for himself now. And he stepped out into the world. And he felt the cool breeze upon his skin. And Stanley was happy. Whoa. Man. Seriously, the person who made this has amazing taste in music. That, that was also Thomas Newman right there. Oh. This is different credits. Doesn't have a. Doesn't have Radiohead at the end there. <laughs> Hopefully my uh, my video won't get a copyright infringement because of that. <laughs> that would suck. Uh, okay, is this just gonna? Like, can I? Oh, music! Here we go. Here's the music that you should look up. Dead already. Any other name? Oh, these. Wait, they have Nine Inch Nails and a Frank Sinatra song? Oh, what? Oh, I see. It's all a different. Okay. It's all a different translation. No problem, man. Okay, wait. Are we done? Is that it? Okay. Now, there were a couple of other areas where I could make different choices, so I'm going to go back to those real quick. So BRB. Stanley came to a set of two open doors. He entered the door on his left. Now here, 
I know that if I enter here, it gives me an option to go back through there, so I want to see what that does. If it changes This anything. was not the correct way to the employee lounge, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door and walked back in the right direction. Sure did. Okay, and so like that, he was back on track. Nice. All right. As Stanley entered the lounge, he was horrified <gasps> to find not a single person here. Where are they? He decided he would walk up this to person. see his boss, hoping that he would find an answer there. All right. So this is our next choice. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Ha! That's a good one, man. Save game. Did it save? Good. All right. Let's go down. Ha. Huh. But Stanley just couldn't do it. <laughs> he considered the possibility of facing his boss. Ah, wait. Of admitting that he had left his post the during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, was it really worth taking that risk? All because he believed everyone had disappeared. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. Whoa. Everyone I know simply vanishing out of the blue, there's almost no other explanation for it. And a nagging fear began to creep up in his mind. Questions what? that had been there all along. Wait. He just hadn't put his finger on them yet. Um. For example, why couldn't he see his feet <laughs> when he looked down? Awesome. Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Was he just walking around in circles? Where am I, he thought. And the more he found himself unable to answer these questions, the more questions continued to arise, uh. until he came to the issue that had been slowly bawling until he could ignore it no longer. Why is there a voice in my head <laughs> dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? <laughs> Suddenly, every door oh slammed God. shut. Oh, God. No, 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 let me in no, here. No, Stanley screamed. I need to get out of here. I need to know that there's something out there. Uh. I need to know it's not just all in I my head. I almost had that. And he screamed oh, and clutched at his skull as the voice grew harsher and the music in the uh. background rose higher and higher. This and then, nails. moments before collapsing to the ground, Stanley clenched his fists and screamed to anyone who might be listening, I'm not real! I'm not real! Don't believe any of it! None of it's real! And then everything went black. Oh, God. What? Um. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What the fuck? <laughs> what? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. Uh -huh. She got dressed... Went to work, clocked in, clocked out, and then she walked home. <laughs> but her walk on this day was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. <laughs> Moments after seeing him, she would turn, run to the nearest police station, and call for an ambulance. But for just a few brief seconds, she merely stood there, unable to move. The tragedy was not the death of a single person, it was that she would never know this man's story, never hear in his own words what had happened to him, or what he believed had happened to him. For to know these things would be to exist inside the head of the man himself. So all she could do was observe from a distance and pity him. But Mariella had places to be and people to meet with, very important people, whose impressions of her would affect her career and indeed the rest of her life. She stood there for only a moment, looking down at the body, and then she ran. That's it. All right. Well, um, is this just okay? It takes me back to the main menu. Okay, I uh, got a couple more still. Um, let's see. Do I have a load? Uh, I don't have a save that will take me there. All right, so I will get to that and be right back. All right, so here we are at the next decision, going up or down. We went. Oh wait, why did I go to options? Need to save. Uh, we went down last time because uh, he wanted us to go down. Let me just make sure that saved real quick. Yes, it did. So there was in fact a red and blue door. 
Um, so we will come back to that, but we will go up for now. Just see what happens. I get the sense there aren't too many more choices because I have... It, if the 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 if I remember correctly, the red and blue door was actually the last choice before you went into the uh the weird um untextured area. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Let's go. I'm punishing myself apparently. Because I went the wrong way. Ooh. Oh man. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, here we go. Um, it almost perplexed Stanley that he had actually gone and stepped into this metal trap. Oh God! After all, it should have been no surprise that this thing would lead him to his death. But he thought to himself, "This is simply the price to pay for ruining a perfectly good story." <laughs> so he resigned and willingly accepted his fate, the inevitable end toward which he had spent so long stumbling. Farewell, Stanley. Oh boy. Oh god, that's loud. And what? Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator as he sent his subject what? down the conveyor belt and into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, um. Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. What? Oh. Can I get back in it? Actually, before I do that, I'm going to save and just... Oh, nope, not load. Save. Did it save? Yes. No. Oh, wait. Can I go back this way? Let me back. No, they won't let me. Damn. All right. That save was pointless. In fact, just so I don't get confused. Deleted. Here we go. Hmm, this is It's a shame, then that for all his work, it was such a meaningless victory for the narrator. Did he really think he would accomplish anything huh. by murdering this disposable vessel? What the heck? What is going on? Does this work? No. So this is like a whole bunch of objects from throughout the, uh, the entire thing. Every possible choice Stanley could make had been designed oh God, no. for him long before he ever set foot here. The narrator wanted to kill him. No. Stanley was already oh dead no. from the moment he hit start. Oh, crap. Am I stuck here now? No. Are you serious? Okay, I think there's a cheat to, like, get out of these things, but, um... Oh, no. Oh, I deleted the save. <laughs> What the hell? I didn't think that would actually work. Oh, god damn it. Okay, hang on. I'm going to look up that cheat to, like, get out of uh, vehicles and stuff. All right. Well, uh, I couldn't find the cheat. I wasn't sure what exactly these things were called. I completely forgot. Um, so, yeah. I'm just not going to get in that again. Yeah. Ooh, that's kind of scary. I hope it doesn't crush me horribly. Okay, we're good. Ooh, that looks like the outdoors. Are we are we actually gonna escape? We're we gonna escape? We we were that close. That's ridiculous. Okay. Wait, what? Um There's no salvation for either of these two, I'm afraid. The narrator had as little power over Stanley as Stanley did over the paths that he walked. Okay. But listen to me. Oh uh, uh, the story is not over. What? You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time to... Um... No. It's not going to do anything. It's for you. Don't let time... <laughs> There's no way for it to actually do something. So... That's pretty funny, though. Um. Hello? These long pauses, um, kind of awkward. Not really sure what's, uh, what's happening. Are they, wow, wait, are they going to force me to press escape and press quit? That's probably what they're doing. I 
think so. Yeah. There, there, nothing's coming on. Okay. That's funny. Ha. All right. Well, then, let's go to the uh, blue and red doors and go through the red one. And I think that'll probably be the last choice unless there are more choices through oh, Stanley. <sighs> the red door. You know, you really aren't going anywhere. And I don't say that deceitfully. I truthfully mean that there isn't a story down here. The story was back up where I told you to go in the first place. Right now, you're just running around looking at empty halls. And frankly, that's perhaps even more infuriating for me. So why don't you throw me a bone? Give me a chance and just let me tell the story I want to tell, hmm? Okay. So, red and blue doors. Here we go. I think there are multiple red and blue doors. I'm not sure if they will actually put you in the right spots. Now listen or carefully. the same spots. This is important. Stanley walked through the red door. All right, so I'll save here. Doop -doop. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. All right, so we'll head through the red door this time. What? Ah. Good, good. Now, if you don't mind, there's something I'd like oh, to show no. you. But to do that, I think it would be best for us to start from the beginning. What? Uh, oh, no. This is a very sad story about <laughs> the death of a man named Stanley. <laughs> I don't want to die. Stop trying to kill me, bitch. I'm fine. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Oh, good morning. His oh. job pushing buttons demanded little of him, so there was not much of himself to give. What? And in this way, Stanley's job felt less and less like his every day. But if I'm buttons need pushing one day, it means they'll need pushing the next and then the next. So without it. question or judgment, Stanley continued to do what the screen told him. One keystroke flowed into another keystroke, flowed into his ride home, flowed into dinner, flowed into waking up, flowed into going to work, and here he was again. Stanley was typing out a complete sentence that said absolutely nothing at all. <laughs> if in reality no one ever actually huh. disappeared from the office, and Stanley never got the opportunity to make a decision, to choose which path he wanted to take, would his life still have any meaning? I can't. Perhaps when we long for something deeply enough, these hopes and fantasies become so strong in our minds that we truly believe that we're there, controlling that person and living that adventure. Hmm. To manipulate your own thoughts and emotions might mean freedom from a self-imposed prison. But these delusions can be fatal to those who can't tell the difference. And so, Stanley asked, if that door never opened, if I'll never be able to walk away from those people and from these buttons, is this life still worth experiencing? Am I actually happy? Stanley answered this question by pushing a button. Mm. Then he pushed a button, and then he pushed a button. Wow. Then he pushed a button. Then he pushed a button. Wow. That's awesome. Oh, that's so thought-provoking. Ah. Oh, that's really freaking cool. Wow. Oh, I, I kind of want to leave it at that, but uh, I'm too curious. Because, like, if I hadn't gone back and done this one, this was the last one, I would not have found that ending, and I would not be as amazed uh -huh. as I had before. Perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. Okay, I'm going to resave here, because I'm not sure if this will actually change anything, so overwrite that save. Hopefully it's still there. Yeah, it is. Go through here and see what happens. It'll probably take me to the same area, right? Good. Yeah, okay. And now, one last time, because the it does do something else. I'm pretty sure. Oh. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. Is this same area? Yeah, that's it. Good. Good, good. All right. Well, that's the Stanley parable, everybody. I'm pretty sure those are all the choices. If I miss something, please let me know, because I would be interested in going back and uh, looking at it. But, wow. That is hilarious interesting, thought-provoking, and just, ah, oh, that was so cool. 
that was really really cool. Um, I can't. I really can't wait for the uh, full release on the uh, on Steam uh, with the green light thingy. Uh, I looked at a, co a couple of the screenshots and I had no idea what it was about, but the screenshots looked really interesting. Um, so I'll have to go back and look at that after playing through this. But um, yeah, that's about it. So thank you for watching, and I will see you in another Let's Play. Bye. -bye.